everyone, and welcome to my talk on Unreal Audio in Fortnite. Today we'll be taking a look at our developer workflows between the audio teams for Fortnite and Unreal Engine, and taking a closer look at how we did game audio for a flagship location on the map called the Rave Cave. Appreciate the opportunity to present today and give more people a window in how we do things over here. My name is Seth Whedon, and I'm a technical audio director here at Epic. I joined Epic in 2016, shortly after graduating from DigiPen with a CS degree, and got my start working on Robo Recall as a technical audio designer. I also had the awesome opportunity to make the soundtrack for the game. Shortly after Robo Recall shipped, I moved over to the Fortnite team to help with the Battle Royale prototype when it started, and got to lay the groundwork for a lot of the game audio you hear in Fortnite today. I've also got to like make a lot of music for the game over the years from some of the very first emotes, lobby tracks, and gameplay items like the Boogie Bomb. Fast forward to today, and we are 22 seasons into Fortnite Battle Royale, and we just passed our fifth birthday this year. Um, we've done many other things from live events, concerts, to creative mode, and everything in between. The team has grown substantially since those early days. Uh, here's just a look at the Fortnite Tech Audio team. There are also many more talented individuals that fill out production, content, and QA for Fortnite's audio. Very proud of all we've been able to accomplish together over the 22 seasons so far of the game that we've shipped. The Fortnite Audio team also has a very close relationship with the Unreal Engine Audio team which is critical due to the sheer amount of content we produce in Fortnite on a regular basis. For every release, our content in tech has to run across all major platforms and is played by millions of players, so it has to be battle-hardened. Um, so we can pretty confidently say if it ships in Fortnite, it's solid. We're constantly looking for ways to push the tech forward and make use of the latest and greatest features. The scale that Fortnite operates at presents a unique opportunity to stress test new features on a huge amount of assets and many different workflows daily. To do this safely, we employ a hotfixable fallback strategy that allows us to flip switches on and off in the live builds and in playtest builds and monitor results without the players noticing. Well, sometimes they notice. Uh, this is one example with Meta Sounds, where within an hour the community noticed we were testing out the rollout of Meta Sounds within Fortnite. And um, yeah, they, they somehow saw the hotfix being applied. Uh, they also seem to think this campfire loop that we introduced was AI generated, um, but we'll just leave that question open for now. <laughs> on to the Rave Cave. This is a location on the map that players can experience right now. We shipped it back in May this year during a very musically themed season and didn't have much to go off of except for a request for diegetic music. So we took that and ran with it to fill this space out with an awesome audio implementation. Here's a short demo video.
So what you heard there was one source of music, which was streamed from outside the client, uh, being piped into multiple speakers, each with different effects and attenuation settings. This implementation shipped on all platforms without any additional optimizations needed and was made entirely with Blueprint and base UE audio features. Here are some goals we set out to achieve with the system. So it needed to accept input from any source. This could be a sound cue, meta sound, or something that is streamed in to the client, like what we just heard. Uh, that source had to be able to be routed to multiple endpoints, so various speakers, audio components placed within the map, basically. And then we had to, um, as designers, outfit each of those endpoints with unique effects and attenuation settings. So the loud speaker needed to sound different from like a busted up TV that was also playing the same sound. Okay, time to jump into the editor and provide a hands-on demonstration of the tech. All right, we are in the editor and this is 5.0.3. And uh, we're just gonna build this from scratch and um, take you guys along for the ride. So we've got some music content here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set up a manager actor that's gonna kind of play our our, be our source of truth for music. And then we'll get each one of these two actors registered with that system as speakers so that they can broadcast the music as well. And um, then we might add some other speakers, try some different effects and stuff like that as well. Just kind of improvise uh, as we go. But um, I've got a sample content folder here with a couple of music packs from Fortnite. And then we've got a couple uh, meta sounds here from Stefan Evrard, and he's also here at uh, Game Sound Con. So um, him and I uh, exchanged a couple messages. He sent me some meta sounds to use in this because really uh, you can play whatever asset you want through and send it to an audio bus and uh, sonify with the source bus. Uh, so it's pretty cool. All right, so we're going to start. Uh, actually, I'm going to start by just creating the audio bus because that's kind of like the the main thing here, and uh, it's under the mix category, audio bus, we're gonna call this music party. Like that. So audio bus music party, open that up and make sure just for this purposes, this, uh, this demo's purpose, we're gonna put it on stereo. And now um, this is what can be sent to. So we're just gonna keep that around for now. I'm going to go ahead and make an actor, which is going to be our manager. And we're just going to call this B Music Party Manager. Drag that into the map and open it up. Now, this manager is going to be very, very simple at first. Uh, we're just going to add an audio component to it. And we're going to put uh, a uh, one of those assets we just had on it. So music disco for now. And for sanity, I'll just make sure that these two sound waves are set to looping. So now this audio component is going to be playing uh, and it'll be totally audible 2D, but we don't want that. Uh, we want this manager to kind of be a silent um, silent manager that's just kind of sending audio to the audio bus and then the speakers are actually going to be the things that you hear so you pretty much pay for a voice with this kind of setup setup um, like a voice is always playing that you don't hear but it's necessary to do that um, when you've got these kind of speakers uh, an optimization that we did on Fortnite was to Query if you're in range of one of the speakers and start and stop the manager source. So um, if you're away from all audible speakers in the map, then we're not paying that extra cost. It's actually really important that we do that because on Switch, we only have something like 16 voices or 24 voices right now total. So every voice counts in those kind of scenarios. All right, so off begin play because I don't want to actually have to configure every asset that I throw into this. I want to do it in script. We are going to set um, audio bus send pre-effect on our audio component. 
and this will use our music party audio bus and our sin level will be 1.0. Um, we're also going to configure our audio component to output to bus only. So we only want this to output to our audio bus. We don't want it to be audible uh, in the map. So now if we play, you hear nothing. Um, so on to the most basic source bus test here. We're going to start kind of thinking about how to route this audio that's playing silently to something in the world that can actually be heard. Um, we'll go into sounds, excuse me, and go to source, source bus. And I'm just going to make this one like a default source bus. We're going to drag that into the world and for now just override attenuation so it's not blasting our head off. It's going to be over here in the corner. And uh, maybe tone down the fall off a little bit here. So now that's just sitting there. And it's in the map. So we just made this asset and put it into the world as like an ambient sound actor. And it still won't make any sound. But if we open up this source bus, you can point a source bus to an audio bus. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to make sure since we want this to be stereo, we're also setting that. Duration can be zero. That indicates that it's just a infinitely playing source. And now when we walk into the map, we should hear audio coming from this location instead of this location. So at its most basic form, this is how the tech works. And this is basically what we did in Fortnite with a little bit of extra sauce on top. But um, yeah, here we'll have these two emitters in sync with each other. And so that's just a really quick test of the fundamentals. Um, now I can go back into my manager and point this at a different asset, like the one that we made for uh, the one that Stefan made. It's a really cool procedural beat going on. And I can actually go into that say default zero. There we go. So you could imagine a scenario where if you do go the meta sound route with something like this, the manager could be responsible for like getting parameters from the game and changing the inputs of the meta sound to drive different layers of music. And then you have all your speakers like acting as diegetic like music sources uh, from that main controller. Um, could be really cool to kind of hear your dynamic music system placed throughout the world in 3D space with something like that. Uh, so I'll go ahead and delete those and we'll get started on our component. Something that we wanted to on the Fortnite side to just be able to drop a component onto any actor in the world and kind of make it a speaker um, rather than going into each blueprint and individually doing some scripting to hook all that stuff up. You can actually like write some asset utilities, um, which uh, Mitchell Lucas is giving a talk on um, as well here at Game Sound Con. But um, some really awesome stuff you can do there to kind of multi-select and perform a batch operation on everything you've selected. So in Fortnite, we made one to add a component to multiple speakers in one fell swoop. And so we just kind of went into a map and was like, OK, we'll take these guys. These are all the speakers and kind of wired them up that way. But for now, we'll just be uh, since we only have two, um, we'll just go ahead and make an actor component and call this one music party component. Really, all I want this to do is provide a sound to play. So we're going to make a variable of type sound base and make sure that this is exposed per instance. So what that does is say we add this component, uh, music party, put spaces, yeah. 
music party. Um, now you see that sound to play actually shows up when I'm selecting that component in the world. Uh, if I do it on this one as well. So in both of these cases, you can click on these actors now, go to their music party component and choose what sound you want to play. So uh, out, out of the bat, we can, we can basically just set a good default for that. Let's just say it's our music party default source bus. And now uh, when you click on one of these actors and go to its component, you'll see that default filled out. So now at least it's it's by default going to work pretty well. And then we can override it for our own needs if we want like a smaller speaker in the corner or something like that. And there's not a prefab of that actor. We can at least go into the instance and edit its sound um, pretty easily. Um, but that's not going to actually play any audio yet because uh, we don't have an audio component. Now, there's a couple ways to go about this as well. But the way that we decided on for Fortnite was to actually add an audio component to the actor as well. And we had like a blueprint for these actors, so we could just change it in one spot and not have to worry about editing every single instance in the map. But, um, you know, we wanted to have the audio component kind of in a believable location, like right where the cone is. So this allowed us to like place it kind of, um, you know, per actor where you would expect it to, to go. So here I've just placed them both like that for now. And then we actually want to link up. So this component, right, lives on the actor. It's down here. And the audio component lives on the actor as well. Um, we want to find that audio component from this controller, from this component, sorry, um, and override the sound and also play it uh, on begin play, essentially. So what we're going to do there is get our owner and call get component by class and type in audio component here. <clears throat> and I'll go ahead and promote that. So we've grabbed it and then I will I will drag out another node. This is a cool trick that um, is a little bit hidden, but if you normally, if you check validity on things like is valid like this, right? It's just an extra node that you're bringing into your graph and it's a macro, which um, are kind of annoying to debug with the blueprint debugger because you end up like stepping into them and stuff like that accidentally. Um, you can just right click a get node and kind of turn it into a two for one deal. And uh, that's what we're going to do here. Um, so now that we've got our audio component, we're going to set sound. And the sound to play is going to come from our instance editable variable. And then we are going to play. And this should result in us hearing kind of like a doubled up, you know, both of these speakers overlapping each other. Ooh, okay, that's hot. So let's put an attenuation on there actually. Um, again, the way that we did this in Fortnite was to actually put the attenuation on the source bus asset. So at least by default, it's got a good um, radius to it. I'll just make the default one and slap it on there. Go ahead and change the track to check out Stefan's other track. Cool. So that's kind of the, um, the basics so far. We've got our component that we added to these actors. They have an audio component on them as well. And we're just kind of making this component hijack the audio component take its properties and set them and then call play. And uh, there we have it. So what we can do with this as well, trying to think of some other examples here, I'll go ahead and tune this attenuation to be a little bit uh, shorter and add some spread. One thing we could do here is to, um, since, since these are kind of doubling up right now, 
what you could do is add an invisible actor, which I forget where the uh, place actors. Yeah. We could just add an actor here. That's like in between them and put our component on that. So if I just grab this guy, copy his component, paste it over here. And we can delete it from these guys. Now we've got this kind of like actor right here with an audio component. So I'll just go ahead and put that to zero. Ooh, probably don't want that to be zero. I don't know if it matters. Uh, so we've got an audio component there. And what we can do now is um, override the attenuation on that audio component like so, and set a 3D stereo spread to like, let's just say a uh, thousand units. So now it's a lot more believable, uh, just one source playing that stereo content with the left and right channels kind of spread uh, like that. All right, so since this is a source bus, uh, we can go even further with this too. Like we can have the, the base kind of set up here. Um, say we wanted to have another speaker that's kind of like off in the corner and smaller. Like that. Um, we'll go ahead and add, let me just grab that actor again. So I'm lazy, just copy those guys from them and take the audio component out a little bit. Okay, so this one, uh, we're gonna change the source bus on this music party component. I'm gonna make another one called small. And this one's gonna have a different attenuation asset as well. Make sure to go hook that up. And make sure we've got something a little bit more subtle on the range. Just testing this out. Oh, that's super loud. Let me turn that down. You can just go into the good old volume multiplier instead of dealing with the graph. Is this one still overridden? Yes, let me turn that off. So let me make this a little bit smaller on the attenuation here, just a thousand units, just to keep it out of the way of this small speaker over here. Okay, so we've got our separate source bus. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the final step and wire that into our component. And then we're gonna make some effects. So I'll make another folder called effects. And now, so we have that uh, source effect chain, we'll go ahead and put that on our uh, source, uh, source bus. Where is that at? There it is. Got it. And uh, we'll just play and we should be able to change it while it's running to hear kind of what's happening. There we go.
Cool. So now we've got two different effects, two different sources here. We've got our manager actor, and uh, yeah, I think we can call it call it a day on that demo. Thanks, everybody.